Yeah, morning everyone. Uh, my name is Pete McKenzie. I'm an agronomist from the uh, Liverpool Plains. Uh, weeds we're dealing with, we've had Roundup resistant ryegrass since about 2000. Um, we've got the privilege of having the highest level of milk thistle resistance um, recently um, of the whole country, I think. Um, we've also got feather top roads grass. We're heading pretty quickly down the line of barnyard grass, liver seed grass, so we're no different to Drew. So um, we're all dealing with the same problems. So I've been asked to talk about how we're using residuals with disc planters in our winter crop system. There's probably plenty of other people who can talk about this better than I can, but um, I'll show you where we've gone wrong and where we're headed a bit at this stage. So um, first question is disc versus time. Um, you do a Google search and you know, there's, everybody's got an opinion. So in our system, the discs seem to work better. Our establishment rates are better compared to a time. Uh, recently, we've had, you know, quite often we only get that one planting opportunity and we're more reliable with a disc than we are with a time. So um, discs pretty much, I would think on the plains would have 80% of the market. So we've got to learn to live with them. Um, they handle how, our high trash, trash levels. But uh, we'll probably, we'll revisit this at the end, I think. Using residuals in winter crop, I reckon you want to avoid it at all cost, because it ain't easy. So um, we should be having this in the cupboard as a tool. It shouldn't be a last ditch resort, last resort. Um, this is some of the people that I've got, that I'm working with, um, this guy, he started his, his career, his farming career, 12 years ago at 60. So he's my pin-up boy for weed management in, in our area. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I have a bit of trouble trying to convince my growers that we've got a problem. So, um, and this guy, he gets it. So that's fleabane. When you looked at the farm, you wouldn't have thought there were that many about. So that's, I think, about his fifth ute load. So he's just running out, picking them off, and um, if this bloke can do it at 72, I don't know why there aren't more sort of 20 and 30 year olds getting out there having a crack at it. Um, here's a few other things we're using. We're using weed at sprays or optical sprays for both primary and, set and double knocks. So I don't think there should be a farm on the plains now that hasn't got one of these or have access to it. Um, they um, they're a fantastic tool, um, make it really economic to use a heap of different, op different options. And when you look at our whole system of, you know, putting 2,4-D out, we're getting cotton damage and all this sort of stuff, it does more than just help us with the re weed resistance. Um, this is another guy. He's got Roundup resistant ryegrass everywhere. He's got really sloping country. Um, so keeping bare fence lines just turns into a gully. So pretty much what he's got, he, He's got these slashes, he's got these grass verges. That tank on the front of the tractor's just hooked to a high pro. And out the edge here, he's um, got a little spray nozzle. So I can't remember what he was using that day, but there'd be a residual and uh, herbicide going down on that crop edge to give that little bit of a space, that little bit of a gap. And as Drew said, underutilised piece of technology there. So um, they're cheap. The maintenance on them is pretty, you know, pretty quick and easy. And, uh, you know, you just got to get out and use them. So I just think there should be heaps more of this. I don't think there's enough follow up. And you know, we're putting, putting our residuals down. We're going out with our weed it's and we think the job's done. But, uh, you know, you look, at, you look at that photo of the ute with the flea bone on it. We thought we'd done a job, but, you know, there's plenty out there. So. Um, to try and stop it, and I know Cookie's done a lot of lot of work on patch management, so nice to know you heard Cookie. <laughs> so, so these are the types of things we need to do as part of our system, because if we're just relying on residuals, I think we're bugging, like Drew said. So this is another one. I've had real trouble sort of convincing guys that we, harvest weed seed management is a great idea. Um, this is sort of, this is the Sydney Uni header, um, part of Michael Walsh's crew, um, and that 
if you if you look at that it's about 250 bucks worth of bent steel a few hours of your time and all of a sudden you're doing harvest weed seed management so you don't need to spend 15 140 grand or anything like that that just dumps the chaff down into the wheel tracks here i wish i had the video of it i couldn't get it through the other day but that beautifully just dumps the chaff in the wheel tracks and all of a sudden our weeds are isolated to that one area. Makes management so much more easy. We're already used to sort of renovating tram lines and all those types of things. So we can just include that in our management. We think after one season, we probably reduce the Roundup resistant ryegrass in the paddocks that we've used it by around sort of 70 to 75% in one go. So if we can use this pretty consistently, I think we're gonna have, we'll be able to go back and use the hoe. So um, also it's got the added bonus, you're dumping chaff and tram lines, you can see that soil there, you know, it's not great. Dumping chaff and the tram lines also helps our summer spraying because we're not getting the dust coming up off the wheel tracks. So it's all part of the system. So um, I think I think this for us is just a no-brainer. So we don't need to be harvesting the whole paddock at beer can height. You know, with all these technologies coming with SATAMAP and things like that, we can identify our weed patches and we can just go to beer can height on those patches. Pretty soon, that'll be, you'll just plug a map in and the header will drop down to the level you want. So I think that that sort of stuff is, you know, fantastic. So, now why don't we want to use residuals all the time? Because of these issues. And that's what happens when you put stomp on sunflowers. Doesn't happen all the time, but you plant, you put stomp down, all of a sudden you get a windy day and all, all your sunnies are laying over at 90, 90 degrees. So, um, we want to avoid it. This is my first attempt at box of gold. So, with the disc system, this isn't the worst photo of it. This crop actually we planted on moisture and got it up before we had a rainfall event. And we just patched it out. So you can see here we're, we're, we've patched out, you know, chasing ryegrass. And it's done a fantastic job on the ryegrass. It's also done a bloody good job on the wheat. So um, all, I haven't got a photo of it, but, but my worst ever effort with this is we had the Weather Bureau predicting eight mils we planted put box of gold down, eight turned into 80, which would be a nice problem to have at the minute. Um, and there was nothing. Again, did a fantastic job on the ryegrass, but it also knocked the jewel out. So makes for a difficult conversation with your client. So, and uh, you know, having that understanding with your client to say, look, we have to use these. These are, these are the risks and things like that. That's that's sort of part of client management and you know, getting their expectations up for what they're in for because chances are we're going to hit, run into these issues. And that's the other issue with putting residuals down. Drew mentioned it. So that's Longfellow cotton. It should be green with wheat and having a head run up the stem at the minute. Now that's not the, the moisture probe stuck in the ground there just to take a photo of it. That's how much moisture we've got. So that residual on the ground isn't going to break down without a level of moisture. So all of a sudden we're looking at potentially having to put a summer crop in and the residual's down that isn't going to allow us to put a summer crop in it. So those things are why we want to use it just as a tool, not as a fallback and a part of our management system. Incidentally, that bend in there only turned up when sorghum went to 300 bucks. So you push a bit hard on the probe when you get that. But if you've got to do it and all these other things aren't doing, what can we do to, to give us the best shot at it? Now, I'm still learning about all of this, so, and there's probably plenty of people in the room who can talk better about this than I can, but I, I was just a sucker that said yes. So plenty of my clients think that should say, Peter McKenzie, solving problems we didn't know we had in ways you don't understand. So it's a complex thing. So sitting down with your grower and getting them, getting to understand how chemicals work 
in their soil and all those types of things helps them get through, you know, sort of helps them get, get it through of what they're up for so, and how it fits in the system. First things first is find out what works. So now this is a simple thing. You stick some seed in a bag, you send it away and it comes back and tells you what does and doesn't work. So we're also working with blokes like Cookie, NGA, things like that. Um, some of the NGA work on, on uh, some of our Roundup resistance says that low ground has really good activity on our ryegrass. Now it's safe to use with a disc, so that's a good option. Let's just hope we don't wreck it and keep it as an option. So finding out what works. After that, now please don't try and read this. It's, this is how I sort of try and explain it to some of my growers, what works and what doesn't. We sit down, find out what works, down this side, we've got pre-crop, in-crop wheat, barley, trit, in-crop canola, in-crop chickpeas. So we're working out in the rotation where things fit. This is the months of the year, weeks and months of the year, and where those operations fit within that, within that, within that system. So that gives us a good idea of where we can be changing our timings on things. Now this, this just happens to be one I did with a grower for milk thistle, but it can be ryegrass, it can be whatever weed. Where those timings fit, so we're not trying to sort of hit it at the same time every year. We've got all these other options. And just some notes out here that we can put down, you know, that we've got a, these other options as well that could, that could work, but, you know, we've got plant backs and all those types of things. So it just gives a grower a visual, a visual idea, and it gives me a better idea as well of where timings fit with what crops and what products we can use and that's you know that's taken us out to uh, that's a five-year rotation just there so we've got a plan as drew said all those years ahead to make sure they're not running into trouble i think this is fantastic so once we work out what we can use um GRDC got this publication mark congreve and john Cranman put it together and has been doing the course and if you haven't done this course it's a fantastic course this residuals course learning how your residuals work in your soil as drew said some bind some break down some move some don't knowing those parameters of how those chemicals work is going to give you a heaps better understanding of what you can and can't do for example valor i'm pretty excited about valor at the minute got good crop choice um, it seems to be pretty good but if a grower is cultivated probably in the last three years and your seed isn't sitting on top of the soil, it's not going to be a good option for you. So understanding how those chemicals work gives you a much better, much better idea of how, how this, you know, how it can fit in your system. So things like Treflan, you know, it's volatile, fantastic cheap product, but if you don't cover it up, chances are you're going to lose a fair bit of it. So. Um, and there's plenty of other research around. This is just a, just a quick Google search on disc versus tine seeding systems. Um, what, if, we've got to use a, if we've got to use a chemical, you know, ideally Secura here is going to give us the least, least amount of damage, so let's have a crack at that first. If we've got to go to Box of Gold, what can we do to make it work? So, you know, we can plant it a little bit deeper. Chickpeas is a, with balance is another fantastic example. You plant them deeper so that they're further away from the chemical. So, but if we're gonna to go to Box of Gold and we, and we have to plant shallow and we can't go quite as deep, we're looking at a 50% emergence rate. So all of a sudden we've got to double our rates to even give us any kind of population. So keeping in mind that population is what's gonna help you with the crop competition later on. So it's all part of the system. <clears throat> Stole this from the guys at Central West. And, you know, planning with my growers for the future, you know, talking about what planters they're going to use and all these types of things, what's an option, you know, where have we got to go, what have we got to be thinking about, you know, this plant is going to last me 10 years, what have I got to be thinking about? So these types of systems, that Arex wheel in the front there of a John Deere disc planter, they're successfully using 
treff land in the central west with those types of setups. Just gives them enough soil throw to cover up that treff land, gets the treff land out of the plant row, um, and they're doing it quite successfully to the point where they probably, it's probably the, the best tool they've got in the shed, but they're breaking it. It's been so good they're breaking it. So um, those types of things, how that works in our soil, I don't know yet because our soil, when it gets wet, moves and moves around and the treff land goes with it. So that's, that could be a problem, but there's all these options out there that we could be, that we could be looking at. Just what crop type are they using those in treff landing? Wheat. In wheat, yep. yep. Yeah, yep. So, yeah. And they seem to be, seems to be doing a pretty good job. However, they know that potentially they're gonna get some damage. They're using it, it's a great tool, but potentially they're gonna get some damage. So it's all part of managing that expectation. I think for the future for us, the disc versus tine thing, you know, we might have to move towards having it a planter, and this is an old one, this is just an old system a client of mine's got. It's an old janky. You drop that shank out, you put a double disc in, and all of a sudden you're planting, your plant establishment becomes so much more even and you get heaps more plants up. So your crop competition's better, but in the situation where we need to use some residuals, we'll drop it out, chuck a tine in, and all of a sudden that treff land becomes an option. So, you know, we can use those higher risk products so that, you know, we can, we can have that flexibility. This is, a, this is a more recent one from Boss. You drop that out, you put a tine in, and, um, and all of a sudden you've got a tine. So our preference is disc, but if we can, if we've got the flexibility to do those types of things, all of a sudden it opens up a heaps more options. Potentially, if we've got residuals sitting on the surface that are going to give us some problems, we can blow some of that residual out of the way to at least give the chance, the plant a chance to have a crack before um, before it starts to come up. So um, that's pretty much all I've got. I'm still learning, please be gentle with the questions. Um, but uh, yeah, again, there's probably more people in the room and if we can have any discussion in this question time of sort of, if you know something, I wanna know it, please stick your hand up.